Welcome to the Bandwagon Podcast, and today I've got a very special guest. Um, one of the things, if you if you're an avid listener of uh, the podcast, or even if you grants, uh, you often get my opinion about uh, the industry's the industry, the music industry, or wherever it can be fairly toxic place, and it's something that a philosophy that I didn't want to bring with me into the po- fellow podcasting world. Um, and today I'm joined by a fellow podcaster. Is Carmen from the Bain Sania podcast, and I'm really pleased that we finally managed to get this t- together. So, welcome to the podcast. Welcome, 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 Ricky. Thank you for having me on your show. Um, it's really nice to be a guest on a podcast. I'm so happy. And uh, yeah, Carmen, they call me Brown Gandalf. Um, don't you have no idea why? It's my. It's because Amrit. You know, he just gave me that name, and I was like, Jal, I, I, I shall be Brown Gandalf. Is that because you, you you have that wisdom look? Yeah, wisdom look. You know, that little, that, you know, bit of Baba style, always coming in with the little life hack thing in the during our episodes. So that's why, yeah, Brand Gandalf just came about. And then Amrit, uh, he's Sorti Swinger. So, uh, yeah. So is this just alternative uh, names for pornos, basically? Uh, Brand Gandalf, if that was ever a uh, naughty adult film, it would be quite a um, interesting one. Sorti Swinger is like edgy. It's a very, it's a person that's dangerous. It's always on the fringe line of, is that appropriate or should that person be cancelled? That's Amrit's style. My style is, uh, it's just, uh, you know, the little wisdom wisdom kind of things, throwing the little three, four minute reels and something or having a rant for half an episode, really, uh, about something. And pe- hopefully people might recept to it. That's literally what it is. I'm, that's I'm, our I'm, nicknames. I'm, I'm kind of sense checking that you're the balanced one out of the two in order to say that if some if Amrit takes things a little bit too far, you're the one saying that Look, I don't think we should uh, release this bit. I don't think we should publish that. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? Uh, you're half right and half wrong as well. Oh. Half part of it is I do allow Amrit to be wild as well, and I'm I can be wild too. But it's just you evolve. You know, when I when I started, so you mentioned like when you intro Bain Sania podcast, that was our first initial how we began. And then we became now the Bain Sania show. But through those years of podcasting, you evolve as a person. Your life changes. You grow up. You change your viewpoints in life is different to when you were three years ago or, you know, what I mean, or even a year ago. What was it? What was the thinking around the difference between having a podcast and a show? Is that is it something that you're looking to export to tv or something or is it just mm, it's interesting i could tell you a little bit briefly of what the origins of bain is yeah, yeah go for so it. we started out in uh this seems like a long time ago uh august 2020 late august well actually yeah stab- we were established then and uh, it was uh, during the covid you know facetime calls between me and amri and amri just one day said should we start a podcast like i had no idea what even a podcast was i didn't listen to rogan i listened to no one and um then I said, yeah, let's call it Bain Sainier. That's it. And then you designed logo. He's a digital artist. So that's why you see some of our visuals. They look like the way they look. It's because Amrit does that really well. And then, uh, yeah, we just uh, planned. And we bought two microphones. And our first recording session was really hilarious. Uh, Amrit spilled water on his laptop. We had to shove that laptop in a uh, washing machine because it was making that. You know, the laptop starts spitting water out. So it started making a like a motor wali of Aj. Right, then, and it wouldn't stop. But if you stick it in a washing machine, won't it make it worse? So we didn't put the washing on. We just shoved it in there so they keep contain the noise. Because we were basically, we recorded initially in Amrit's, uh, we call it the man cave. It's an uh, uh, outhouse out of uh, an extension. And it's like, that became our headquarters. So we, because when you're audio recording, you imagine having a background sound. It sounds like you're in the bender, right? Like, yeah. right? So we had to lock it in there. And then we just basically worked off uh, we didn't know how to record, so it was hilarious. Like we don't know how to create two mics and have sync it up. So we basically recorded on one microphone, did first four episodes, basically knee to knee. Like my left knee is next to his right knee. It's sweaty. It's August, humid temperature. Man cave is hot, and we recorded, and then, and then that's it. We just um, that was like a corner. Basically, yeah. <laughs> it was essentially, it's a very sensual. Uh, porno, I think soft, you'd call it. You know, just soft as they did it, Uncle Nadia, right? Yeah, right. Naughty, dirty ones, they look here, you know, I mean, the British Airways uncles in Heathrow Airport. If you're down south, you know, they're dirt, you know, some of them. And um, yeah, it's like, it's like a soft, it's a soft porno, you'd say. And that was our first encounter of podcasting, uh, recording. And then from there, went from knee to knee 
to then chair to chair, and then from chair to chair to now in the studio, looking at each other in a very uh, in a steam room, but always in hot rooms. We always ended up recording either in the man cave or even now when we're in a studio is hot. So the difference is, so then that was a Bain Senior podcast. We did that for about a year and a half and recorded nearly 70 episodes total oh, wow. on that separate entity. And then we went to Bain Senior show, which is essentially the same branch, but what it is is now show because it's visual. You can see us before you couldn't. So then in July uh, 2022, uh, that's when we established the Bain Senior Show and been going for about a year, which I think we've recorded lug, lug bug about 60 episodes, maybe, I think, on video. Are you still releasing them one a week or is it still kind of like, what I mean is like, um, sometimes mm-hmm. I always, I try to do like two or three in a bank mm-hmm. and then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, release them that way. But like, are you, as soon as you're recording them, releasing them straight away? um what we do is we have to work it's very tricky i think we record in a bit in advance slightly in advance just so it gives it time but we release an episode week by weeks but we, it, that episode whatever episode released now will probably been done recorded three weeks ago or something um so that's how we operate um and that's the same thing we did with the bain Zanier or when we were initially podcasting and that's throughout because it's just easier sometimes you know you, you can't do things last minute do you know what i mean and, yeah, um, I always uh, I always find it a little bit. Um, the, the 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 pros are obviously it, you, you're not panicking to kind of get uh, um, mm. like for me obviously I I have, a, I have a predominantly or like guests are very rarely I do a jump off play this where I'm just looking at the camera myself but um, sometimes I'm I'm struggling like two days beforehand to kind of grab someone and yeah. and and it is kind of edging your pants and basically like saying I've said it's coming out it's coming out yeah. But the, I find the 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 positive of that is that you're very relative. So if someone's just broken on that day, you yeah. know that it's just been done. I, you know, I've done a podcast where we were talking about the royal family. The Queen's died, and I released it as though she's still alive. Do you know what I mean? Because it was yeah. really weeks earlier. So I yeah, think, yeah. Do you ever get into situations like that? Yeah, yeah. The Queen was another fun guy we had. So we did a um a little. I just made a remark about you know it was a sexual remark uh between queen elizabeth uh rest in peace lizzie and uh prince philip obviously is a rest in peace him as well and he's he's got he's he alive um i remember that one as well that was he died as well so basically what happens was it was something sexual between lizzie and philip right rest in peace both of them and it turns out when lizzie died and we released it and because we're being senior show we take risks we just left it or like jal going now Let's have a you know a little bit of a laugh, but um, but it was not yeah like we are risk we've done, I don't know where to begin the craziest stuff we've done we've on podcast audio like anyone listen to it they'll actually like they might I don't know what they will think because the when we used to when we initially we do skits as well right so the skit stuff was crazy like like Trump and a Chinese person in a massage parlor you know we've done just uh, uh, um. A, a Santa that uh, takes a liking to children. Um, that that it's like South Park. It's crazy, yeah. We we're, 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 it's crazy. We are crazy. That's that's how being that Bain Senior is linked to being on the fringe line. Like I always say, you know, um, any day we could get cancelled. I believe. Is that is that? I'm not saying it in a in a in a perverse way, but is is that the idea to get cancelled? Because for some mm. people, when mm. they're being cancelled, it's actually done wonders for their their relaunch of when they've come up because they've actually attracted it more like yeah. bad PR is good PR or um, you can see it now where people are saying more and more edgy stuff especially in the co- in the comedic sphere um, yeah. you can see that they, that that fight back against um, whether it's wokeism or whatever it's uh, mm-hmm. um, being cancelled do mm-hmm. you is that something that resonates with you? It does slightly resonate. Our aim is not to be like the thing is when we ever podcast, like we we don't want to. We're not putting a fake persona out there. It's hard. You can't be fake in front of them mm-hmm. when you're anything you do, right? And if we don't want to be, that's not our intention. But if we're going to create comedic content, we're going to be move. We get our inspirations that we seek, you know, from like the likes of Dave Chappelle, South Park, you know, these kind of individuals, or many great comedians that I listen to or Amrit listens to. We're going to take inspiration, and if we've got something political or something social issue, we're going to try and make it with a comedic swing. It will have a message on every single skit has an underlying message, but it's up to the person where they can read between the lines. And that was since day one. And it's also being creative. You know, you can have 
a Rogan style episode. That's Rogan doing it. But Bane Sania, we need to be something different. So that's what we wanted to create. Mm. So having skits it's fun. It's actually really enjoyable. I love doing skits. The skits is the funniest thing I'd ever do. I'd love to do that. But if we need to be serious and talk about like I've done episodes many times about domestic violence, that's fine. I've done it before. So um, you know, we've done many, many different things that are serious, funny, social issues, comedy, draw money, you know. Um, but you know what? One thing to link about when you're saying fun game with guests, I feel what you could do is like, I don't know, if you found someone on the street, you could just grab them and say, Child Baron and a podcast got here, like Uncle and like Bobby are probably the best people. They've got so much knowledge and so much of a take on life. I think I'd I'd love to watch that. If yeah. you had let's go wild. Let's see if you had like Fun. a so if you want uh, it's in the, obviously you like the Soul Road benches, right? Yeah, on, yeah. Where the Bombay used to sit on the Soul Road. Yeah. And then you see the world go back. Like but you got different levels in it. If you're talking Bombay between nineteen eighties and let's say eighty five, let's say eighty, nineteen eighty to nineteen ninety five, those Bombay are like Michael Jordan elite Maradona level Bombay because they saw yeah. they saw everything. They had gala for the people who came when when they first landed. And they've got Ghana from uh, who their children have married. And they've got Ghana for everybody else in the friend back home yeah. about land being taken. Yeah. The 95, Bob Bear to 2005. You know, they, they saw the millennium. They sold out a little bit then. I can't yeah. see them like, their views will be a little bit too modern. I, I would say you need the old fashioned Bob Bear. You know, the Bob Bear where when they were young, yeah, they'll move him mad. They had their shirt cooling out, you know, with the chain, shirt out open in the 70s, you know, with the hair out, chest hair. They've got like gold garag, rings, and they're, 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 they're married. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? They're like Those ones would be really interesting, I'd say. Um, I, I think that's something that I would love to have as a guest um, one day. I'll try and find a baba or, or an uncle that's quite naughty. Yeah, I, see, and, my thought, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's true what you said in terms of like, you know, your... You, you, you two are so creative in your sketches and to do that. I think that the, the, I think it's just the format. With like for me, I um I listen to a lot of Rogan. I listen to Theo Vaughan. I love all of these guys and stuff. Um, but I try and I I'm, I'm really inspired more like like Louis Theroux, where I try and you know listen to not ask too many deep questions, but get the person because they were the way that I look at it is like when you're interviewing someone, they've got one story predominantly. And mm. I don't want to disrespect that story um, to having to an audience of four or five people. Because I've seen it where if I try to get, a, you know, a fairly unknown guest um, and they're really excited and you, you talk to them and you put and you put it out, you know, they might not get the, the, you know, the views of what another guest might have. And I don't want to disrespect that, the, that value in order for them to um, not get the same kind of push that I wouldn't push somebody else who's fairly well known. Mm. And I think mapping it that way, that's the way, that's just my style. That's how, like, you know, the way I do it. Um, yeah. Because yeah. I haven't got the creativity and the skills of what, what, what you guys do. No, 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 no. I mean, everyone's gassing us up, but I swear. Like, I go, I, no, I'm I up just, in Birmingham. I'm up no, in Birmingham quite a lot as well. So I do know, like, Soho Road, yeah, you know, yeah. Rook, Rookery Road is a nasty place as well. I, I've been around there. I li- <laughs> Yo, oh, shit. Do school? you live near Rookery Road? I, I, I went, my school, primary school was Rookery Road Primary School. Okay, yeah. So opposite there's been, been like, I don't know if you ever catch uh, a bit of the episode, but Rookery Road is like the epicenter of Bangara. Right? All right, okay. So yeah. imagine you got Saw Road as the main artery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where all the labels used to be. So you had yeah. Roma and um and you had Oriental Star Agencies, Envy, Music World, yeah. you had all of them on that road, right? Yeah. But Rookery Road is where everyone used to live. So just off there. So right. off there, there used to be Sukhshinda. Shinda used to live off one of the roads. Jazzy okay. Binda Jati used to live in one of the roads there. So I know Binda Jati. Yeah, so you go, then you go past my school and Buddha Pradesi used to be there. Oh, so And his family. Then oh. opposite my school used to be Bimbi Nankis and Gordara. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, I've seen it. On one corner used to be Gachan Mal, where we where we used to play learn the tall, but you used to have tall blaster studios or mini I can't remember what you called the sto- studio. Yeah. And then on the other road was Elsford Road next to Bibi Nanki. Used to be where Sufri used to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this, okay. I don't know if you follow me, but if you go two more roads where I used to live, at the top there 
Mm-hmm. Um, used to be Gajan's house, Gajan Mal's house. Yeah, Gajan Mal's a legend. Yeah. And down the bottom used to be AS Gang on that on that beat. Then if you yeah. go left, or just off off there used to be Hollywood Road where Opera Video used to be. Now Opera Video where I had Opera Budget on the podcast. So I tried to time the guests as well. So if they listen to it, I had him early on to set the scene for everybody else. Because mm-hmm. he was one of the first video guys he uh, filming uh, Asian weddings. The people used to book with him and then he said, oh, I've got this band, I've got that band. Because they used to have their photo shoots for their covers of cassettes. At his yeah. Show. So it's all in that kind of square mile or two square mile was the hub of everything. All right. I cussed Rickery Road, yeah, and I actually now have to take that back now because there's too many legends in on round. I'm just saying, yeah, when I last went Rickery Road, it was a bit risky. No, and no, when it, I was... bro, I'm with you now. I like, I've, I've gone past there. A lot of it's changed, man. It, a lot, yeah. of it, a lot of those shops have turned into Dixie Chickens and you know five chickens for fifty p. You know all that kind of rubbish. Um, yeah, even Soho Road as well. Like, yeah, there's risky. more. There's more, and I'm going to say this because this is my observation now. I'm I love Birmingham, so I'm going to put it out there that the Birmingham, I feel Birmingham's better for food than London in terms of this corner. Like if I want to go for a mixy, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm veggie. I come up there. I've got Rose, no Soho Tavern, yeah, Oak, yeah. all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you, ain't um, you ain't mess mix grills. It's not even a conversation. I, I have to admit that because from down here. There's only a f- there's mixies places, but they're why, all okay. Just before you go into, and I, I don't want you to finish that point, but before I forget, why do you think that down south haven't done it? Because like it hasn't caught on properly, properly. Um, basically, if you look at it, people down south. So when you see south, I've lived in London and I live outside of London as well. So I currently live outside, but Londoners uh, have ego. They believe London is the whole country, it's the whole world. Everything is London. London, nothing beats London. If I'm going to go outside London, I'm going to fly out of the UK. So for them, they see Birmingham. Whole, anything from north of Watford? Basically, anything north of Watford, eh, Oxford is now a different Oxford, whole world. Yeah. So London is, they think London's here and Birmingham's here. They always think that. You can't get it out of their head. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people in London, the problem is the way London's structured is you've multi faiths and people of different color, like color, created living on the same road. There's no zones like the way Birmingham is, right? Birmingham, you have certain ends like and and uh, that you think is a particular community, and then you go next road, it'll be another community. Yeah. But in London, everyone's kind of mixed. You have certain things like East London is Bangladeshi predominantly, West is more Punjabi uh, slash Pakistani, and then you have you know where uh, the African Caribbean community are, and North London is it could be all very so. Mixies, I think the people in London are because of that big global city. They're not caught on to the proper raw Desi style. Do you get what I mean? Like, you go Birmingham. People are in their roots. They're more in their culture. And down in London, they're not deep into their culture. They're, I'm not saying all, but it's just like, if you're outside, the moment you step outside of South Hall, you, 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 you can find plenty of coconuts. It's not hard. That finding a coconut is very easy. You go down Shoreditch, you got them two, two you know, coconuts that, you know, Sassari cow, that, that's what you're going to get. But that's fine. We need to educate the Sassari cow to how say Sattri Agal. So it's it's that no, it's it's not it's it's sasika. It's just one word. Yeah, shashikal or you know they it's them ones, isn't it? So because that global connection to the city, you know that time because it is still a, a big city. London's a mega city in that sense in terms of reach. It, they have that ego. So when they go Birmingham, they look down. They think yeah, it's, it must be cheap. But actually, Birmingham's up and coming, and I I, I think it's more value from money living up in the midlands but um yeah that's why i have to admit that man the veggie especially for veggie mixed grills i have too much you know um, i've been growth I, I know a lot of people who've um, even from here like you know when you were talking about road to road that that that's changed now from like the 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 next generation have kind of got more affluent they dispersed mm-hmm. out to loads of parts but what mm-hmm. happens is it's like a hard reset like if you want to get down and dirty and you want to have a proper mixed grill like people have tried to take Mixfield to like the more affluent area, it's Sutton and all these ones. But even yeah. the the natives around here, um, mm. non Punjabi, would know that if you want to make sure you have to go into the heart of West Brom. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. that's where that's where you've got to go. So they'll they'll go there to experience it. It's like a day out, it's like a night out. And even yeah. the, even the Desis have moved out, they won't go into those areas because all they'll do is 
if they order a mixed school, I went to a mixed school place around here, and uh, it was like four chicken pieces, and it was it had all you know when they get the you know when you get the mint sauce, and yeah. it's sprayed like this. Oh it's not a top. no! And I'm like, and I'm looking at, them and they go twenty five pound, please, sir. And I'm like, what? And then oh. you just like throw that out. You get a taxi straight into sports when you're like, fill me up, man. Just, yeah. just give me that mint yeah. sauce right now, man. I tell you, it's criminal to do that, and that's the problem in London is. You've got mixy places, but besides from that, even there, their mixed schools are not as big as the Birmingham one. When I went into Surrey Tavern the first time, yeah, and I did not understand when I got a King mixed grill, I realised what the size was of that King mixed grill. And we not got one, we got two. And there's only a few of us. And we looked at it, it's like a mountain. I was like, bruv, like, this is not looking good, but this is looking good as well. Um, and, and also it's that ve- veggie aspect as well. They've got really good meat-free mixed Mikey, grills. Mikey, Mikey, yeah, veggies, the one, the guy who kind of runs like Surrey Tavern part of the whole family. Yeah, yeah. One of the main boys there, he's veggie, so he's he's concentrated on that. But there's also the sly ones as well. You go to a mixed grill, even in, in Birmingham, where like you've ordered a mixed grill, and what they've done is that they might have a couple of pieces of kebab. They hide that in there, and then they just fill it up with the, the chicken just to make it look. And you're like, hang on, I wanted a mixed grill, not chicken with kebabs. True, you know, but then this is the thing about meat people. You guys attack them. The, the the kebab is the most important thing, right? And the lamb chop. You guys are going for that. And there's only two of them. So four or five men, one of you guys are lucky. The yeah. rest have just got to watch each other eating, chomping on the chicken. It's past but, the living or, crisis, bro. You need to, we need to, um, we need to be, you have to be ethically correct. You know, efficiency is everything. So like now we're looking at who's given the biggest, who's got the biggest pile, right? Yeah. Then for me, my personal issue is the torka smell. I can't handle it. Yeah, yeah. because some places they last for a week in it. Yeah, it doesn't. your clothes, it's just every it's in your pores. So yeah. I have this massive argument privately out. So this is the first time I'm probably disclosing it on the podcast. But yeah. A mixed grill is based on the grill, yeah. So we it used to be called like a, we go for an Indian barbecue. Yeah. So sportsmen, for example, in West Brom. You do it on the coals, so you can mm. go in there, have a mix, uh, have a mixed grill, and actually leave the venue not smelling, and that you smell the way that you come in. Right, yeah. Some places yeah. you go past, it's in the air about half a mile the torka before you get. <laughs> then you get when you go into the place, then they bring out a sizzler. I mean, what the fuck is a sizzler, right? <laughs> they put it on the table. And then the and then the guy the guy the way is it Paddy Horko Do you need anything else? Nah. And then and then you're like, nah, I'm already like my mates are here. I don't really want to be here, but okay. And then yeah. you put the lemon out from somewhere <laughs> and start dripping it down. And yeah. then just for the tour, just for the show. And like as he's doing what what is he what is he expecting? Everyone to clap it. <laughs> bit of black magic, bro. You gotta be careful there, man. I don't you know, know but I, I didn't want a tweet, man. I'd be, I'd be happy if he brushed his teeth before, uh, before anything else. Where, where's your go? What's your so you go to sportsman? What's your best mixie that you'd go? Which place would you go if you had to leave this recording right now and go go get mixie? I, I have to go sportsman because sportsman, it's okay. one of the things is because it's the, the kebab, the boneless. The mm-hmm. mint sort. It's the it's the history. I'm more of a kind of a historical person. You could probably tell, right? I'm I'm more about the loyalty within that, right? But yeah. there are some up and coming, like obviously so the way how they do it. Yeah. Uh, it's a service. Royal Oak is another yeah. one. Um Island Inn now. I've got mm. like there's so much competition. If you're a customer, you, you you're sport for choice now. It's it's amazing. Yeah. You know, the oh. more restaurants and a lot of them. Now you can take your family there. Like, oh yeah, that's another problem. Yeah. So down so, like, south, yeah, you can't do that. Honestly, not not many places. Yeah, I remember I walked into a place. I went with uh, Prash, and I went to the. I went. I was down for the the, the conference show. Remember the the podcast conference show. Oh, in London, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went. I went there, and we walked into a place, and it was a shisha lounge as well. So it was a shisha lounge, mixy and all this. And I've got like there's a group of old uncle there, and they've got. A bottle on the table, drinking, and you're thinking, "Oh, I feel at like home." That's like a normal thing. Mm. And the other one, there's like, is it like a table of things and that vaping that as well, like doing the hook, the, doing the sheet. And I'm like, mm, okay. we're still like 
we're still 20 minutes behind on that stuff in Birmingham. Like, you, yeah, you, that's sticky, you, man. That's a bit weird. And I'm like, maybe it's a you thing. Like, mm. no one my age would be doing it, like, open and things. I'm not saying, I'm just being my own opinion here before anyone. Yeah. Else. But I was like, it, things are so far forward in terms of modern and, and culture and society. It's a bit uncomfortable for me. But, like, some venues are where I would take, I could take, majority of those venues that I could take my family in there and, and it's fine. Whereas five, ten years ago, you wouldn't feel comfortable mm. taking them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into it. It's true, it's true, man. Like when I the mixy place I used to go to quite a lot in South Hall is Prince of Wales. That's the popular yeah, I've one. heard of that. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. They're lollipop chicken, you'll like that. Of course, meat person is man. It's a lollipop chicken is basically it's like a fat wing. So it's like this big yeah, but dumb meat. And it's the bone, but it's fried and it's like proper rare with sauce. So the lollipop chicken is it's basically the tip of that chicken is quite big. Um, I, if I explained, I can't explain it. You just got to go and get it. Like the, Experience the, in it. Yeah, I've, experience, been, uh, I've, I've actually been there for points. So I haven't actually eaten there. No, I'll tell okay, you what, I have you... eaten there. I have eaten there. But this oh, was okay, ages ago, ages ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit weird because it's like wooden benches. It can get, it can turn into a sesh pretty easily. Like, some of the drunks will come in there. So it's not really a, a family environment, but you know what? I do like the food there, but yet again, for veggies, it's just... Do you get like lock-ins in it, bro? What was it, sorry? Do you get lock-ins? Lock-in? Like, in what sense? Like, so, like, let's say you're supposed to close at half 11, but you oh, end up at half 2. It depends, isn't it? If there's a rave going on, they might just carry a kulara. I don't know. Like, it's happened before. Sometimes I had bhangra classes, and afterwards, next minute you know, it's a, it's a full, like, uh, everyone's just having a party in the in in the basically in the pub. And um, I think they should lock off. They've already finished about 2 a.m. max. Yeah, 12, I, what, what, I've, what I've, we find here is um, a lot of the kind of proper restauranty pubs, mixed grill places, yeah. like 11 o'clock, you've got to you, they get you out of there now, half 11. Yeah, yeah. I think they need to remember their roots and culture, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and I do get that. I think as a young generation, like a lot of them, like I obviously I'm 27, so I'm still wow. outside. I'm considering myself young as well. Yeah, you are, man. And I, I'm younger, man. I've still got a few chifty daddy. That's two. That's the start. I can't see with the light, the lighting of the podcast. You can't see none of it. Now you see it in when you watch a Bane Cine show. There's there's white hairs lying in the front. But <laughs> I would say I when I look at now the up <laughs> the upcoming young people, like let's say the 16, 17 year olds, they're a bit different now. They they're not as the they're exposed to it's a different world now, you know. When you look at music as well, you know, different artists. Like I was in the Gurdwara and I spotted uh, AS Ganga. Like, I saw him, and I saw Sir also... Ankaji. Yeah, no, in um, So Road, So Road Gurdwara, and uh, doing seva and stuff. And um, I said to I said to straight, like, Ankaji, don't push on like that. And I started, I said Sasikalji, you know that, and you have the gen. He's like, yeah, this I'm the Lord of push on earlier. And I was like, right, yeah, because these kind of the artists. They their songs are evergreen, they're golden, like you know, and that when I speak to young people now, like younger than me, they're like, Oh, what is what is who's there? Who are they? And um that surprises me a lot. But who's so, whose fault whose fault do you reckon that is? I think it's a mixture of it's the music industry as well. The music industry has changed so much, but it's changed in a good way, but I think also parents need to get their kids into their roots. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what I think a lot of the time. And I think also uh, parents should educate their children to learn how to speak Punjabi, which is a key thing. You know, if they don't, if a, if a child never learns Punjabi, they can't listen to Salinda Shindar songs. They won't know. The, the thing is, the old albums, yeah, I listen to a lot of the old tunes. Like if you saw a Mirza Seba or you listen to some of these albums, the album's actually a story. They talk about what they're going to sing and then they go into... The song and the song becomes the story. The lyrics is is very important, and that we don't have nowadays. So but I think I think as well at the same time though there was a lot of people who would sing songs or sing along the songs but didn't know the meaning of the words. Yeah. So so like you know like my kids, um, more my my son at the moment, he he would sing along songs but obviously he has no meaning to it. So I like mm. I'll, I'll I'll tell him and then I'll tell him the story like a a folk story. And he'll just start laughing. And then I'll be like, I mean, they're used to Avengers for fuck's sake, right? Yeah. So they used to say, oh, this geezer's, this geezer's, um, this girl's brothers, right? They came up with a massive sword, yeah? Like, and the archer, he was sleeping, you know, why, why was he, why was he sleeping by a tree for? Why can't he? Yeah. You know, there's just no, it's hard to put it in the context. I'm, yeah. 
I'm telling you, like, Romeo, Juliet, he runs out, like, come on, man. You you literally match them. Like, Punjab, Punjabi culture can have its own Shakespeare plays. Oh, you know, yeah. We yeah. don't need to look at... This is one thing I rediscovered, is that we look at Western influences so much, but we don't realise our Punjabi culture is rich oh, massive, in yeah. terms of stories, you know, the origins of Pangra. If you go deeper into that, why do we... Where the toll comes from, Pakistan, actually, the side of Punjab, not our side of Punjab. Why do we do this? What's this? What's what, you know all these things? Even me myself, I'm still yeah. I'm I, I I wouldn't say I'm fluent in Punjabi. I would still say that it takes me time to decipher some of the lyrics. Like if I listen to Sartaj, if I listen to Godas, man, listen to any song, I still need to listen to it again. But if I'm listening to Shob's album, man, it's like you know tear komade, share komade. Like it's so like, what's oh. the meaning of a tear komada? Like tear flat, we hold it Like it's no. It's catchy songs. Do you know what I mean? There's no, there's no actual that, like meaning. You've actually hit the nail on the head, which I, what I've been saying is like with, like with AP, they're not hard lyrics. So yeah. then, like you know, the the identity, for example, they're not deep lyric. A kid coming from that heritage can actually sing along with it and say, "Yeah, I am." Because or whereas if it was a Sardar song, in that style, proper Dunga Punjabi, they right. wouldn't be able to relate to it. Plus, obviously, the beats. A lot of the beats are not having a toll in there. A lot of the beats are not having a thumbi in there nowadays. So it's, it's it, this. There's, I think we're at a tipping point in terms of where we go in the future in terms of what sound, whether a toll sound or Punjabi instruments dom- still continue to dominate the scene, or yeah. it's going to become a phase. Or we're going to bring the toll back for a phase, or we're going to bring a thumbi back for a phase. So the yeah. consistency will just be, you know, trap beats or whatever, whatever. Yeah, the trap influence has kicked in, but also sampling as well. Some DJ some producers might just use recycled beats and just put it in. But like, for example, I'm coming with examples when I say this now, like True School. I'm a big True School fan from day one. I've listened to him from when he was with Specialist. Now, if you listen to him, now, when you listen to that, what's that song? What's that film, the Jeet's one? Jory? Is it Jory? Yeah. I watched the film. While I sat in the cinema, I realised, holy crap, in the beginning, there's True School produced it. I was like, right, let's listen. When you listen to each song, like Jodi, Teri, Meri, these songs, you start seeing the ma- the difference of the Tolki tempo. Now, if you close your eyes, you listen to it, you feel like you're back in the 80s or 70s in their courage and you've got a microphone there, Tolki, Vajja, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, an Atombi. It's actually unbelievable, the level of production. And it had deserves its recognition no matter what. That's when I listened to that album. Yeah. I was like, Va Dulji. But he's, 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 Karan, well but he's obsessively unique in terms of I think somebody, I think maybe Diljit actually said that he called him a scientist. Like, yeah. in terms of to get that sound that he would obsess to make it, to replicate as much as he could, right? Yeah. Whereas then you've got other um, other producers who are computer programmers. Now, the yeah. battle is where you've got somebody on the extreme like that, a scientist and a computer programmer, is now you've got AI that can bring both of those things and actually mm. ex- ex- exclude them both. Mm. So you know where somebody could be a brilliant computer programmer in bringing together a sampling and making a song, right? And you can hear all the samples within it and, mm. and put it together. Ultimately, the customer at the end of it is like, I don't care what you've done. I'm, I'm listening to it. You know, that's your problem. Sure. Now, right? And then yeah. you've got the scientist side of it there where... Um, looking at the finest intricacies, um, mic positions, sound engineering. AI has basically just killed both of their argument and say, well, I can lift that, make that sound, and do it in that style at the same time, and I can exclude exactly. both. I mean, yeah, I, exactly. heard, I heard Sufri AI vocal um, singing a Daljeet song. Wow. And I sat there, and it was about... I would say about 90% or 95% bang on. And this is only an early technology of what we've got. Uh, that's the thing. It's up to humans to make sure that we, we have these tools at AI, but use it within reason. But and it's that's not the thing. Humans, all, humans are, we are our own downfall. That's the thing. We always, there's greed. There's all sorts of things kick in. And I hope that, you know, people that are listening understand their appreciation of what's good music and what's not. What's the actual quality behind it? There's many trap artists, many DJ techno producers out there. Some are good and some are just, you know, you find the same ones, but very few are like true school. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. I just want to like, I'm a big, big, big Punjabi, you know, music listener. I go, I try and go back, you know, to the part of the, the, you know, the old folk singers or the old time generation that when they, you know, Yamala Jat go from all the way there. 
to you know go to like the era of like Gurdasman and they go beyond to like Jazzy B and then even the modern artists right now some of them are good and some of them you know but you know it's a big industry you know there's a social media side of things you got to be, you know as a singer you got to have a good social media presence you know you got to learn to make you know have those reels out there the way Karnaj is doing things to basically progress but you, you know always, I mean? you'll always get the ones who uh, like yeah. sure he's not very active yeah, yeah. He's not very, and like, you'll always have a few that actually define, mm-hmm. go against the grain of it as well. At the yeah, same time, yeah, yeah. I think what, what I think what it is now is that we've never seen as much money in, involved in the industry, whether it's DJs, the wedding industry, wherever it is, or the concerts and tours that are happening. I mean, the mm-hmm. amount of people that who are touring this year coming up is is ridiculous. You can't fit everyone in. And before, they were part of a, a gentleman's agreement. The last one does this year. The next year it will be um, Diljeet. And so they alternate it, you know, to make sure that 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 audience out there can actually spend their money wisely. Now you have Safdaj, Shub, um, the whole Freshers tours kicking in, uh, festivals. uh, You've got Bawa's being, uh, Ami Verk's coming around in October. You've just got volume and volume like Adnan Sami's happening right now, a uh, couple yeah. Sharma, and then you got the Bollywood people coming mm-hmm. over. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. It is, it's crazy. Like, because people have not thought about mm-hmm. a business. They've just gone, if it's up for grabs, I'm taking it. I'm taking it all. Exactly. I'm not. I'm not being involved. It's money. It's money at the end of the day, and that's that's something that are, you know it does run the Punjabi music industry. and it's just changed. And even the you know ticket prices are quite high as well. I looked at Emmy Verk as well, and it's uh, yeah, it's not it's not exactly like would you say uh, an affordable in that sense, depending where you want to sit. You know, wherever you sit is always going to be some drunk, you know, person or Punjabi one by anyway. So you know, you have to deal with that. So yeah, I'd, I've been to many Gurdas Man shows in my childhood, uh, day one. You know, I've been going, but then I got bored of it because it was like not. And I'm not being offensive to Gurdas Man, but it's just it was almost the same thing again. Each each time he came, it was like Challa comes on, was like, oh, crazy. Some uncle gets booted out, you know, the arena because they're too drunk. Someone's trying to jump on stage. Fine. But the songs were kind of the same. And, and you listen to it and it's like, yeah, you know what? I respect him and I respect his grind. Um, but it's a new it's a new world. Um, and yeah, see, these are things that are, you know, so important to talk, talk about. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think yeah, more and, you, and more is like yeah, the people's off-field stuff as well started to play play into it. You know, the, the, mm-hmm. the politics, not even the art, the people's stances. Because people are just, people are not after just their music content they want to know they're obsessive about knowing what they what they're thinking where are they what they're doing and people mm-hmm. are experiencing them and you know never meet your heroes sometimes never not to meet your heroes even through social media don't follow them because when you actually see them you're like fuck that i tell you about like you talk let's touch upon this content creators like kind of thing right because it's probably something that you want to know about and it's like one of the, it's one of those worlds that are creating and it's really good because you know we when I was young, I see watch Just Rain, oh. AKTV, Superwoman. Like I know people are gonna criticize Superwoman, but I used to not religious. I didn't never. I was never a fan of her content, but you just see the grind and you're like, okay, well done to you. But AKTV with and Just Rain were the main people, and um, it's nice because it started off things where actually Punjabi people like, what's wrong with us? Like why can't we do comedy? Like if you look at the African communities, the Carib- Afro Caribbean communities, they're doing so much. They're in the social media. They're out there in mainstream media. And I'll I'll still they back to something, you know what I mean? So there is a thing. If you're not in te- like book smart, then you know, let's go for it. That's that's literally are, it, you know what I mean? Are you like I, I, I think like like Bob Bullicious, for example, um I, I love him, yeah. I always find he was one of my favorite characters in terms mm. of like uh, the mechanics the me- mechanic sketch with him and just rain um is arguably one of my is is one of my most favorite uh, sketches uh, ever. Uh, I can listen to it. Yeah. It always makes you smile. Yeah, I think he, I think he picked up that the that whole vibe. What just Rain missed out on, mm. you know, because it, he, he's gone away. But I think there's a bit more of a serious note into this. Is that what we see with like Lily Singh and and with AK and with just Rain? That we experienced them and we are uh, on that social media wave when they first came through. 
But and I wanted to get back to the kind of the format of the show, but the pressure into building and having creative content at some point in time defeated each one of them. Yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. they all experienced burnout in some way and shape mm-hmm. or form. Mm-hmm. And you can see that now with a little bit with Katapa. Where Katapa yeah. is he's all of, he's on fire. He doesn't give a fuck about anything, right? Yeah. And then he every time when I was watching his videos, he's always apologizing of his schedule. He can't get stuff out and, and the way that he's doing. And so and then you you as a, a follower, you can fall into the trap saying, Oh man, this geezer's not even bothered. He just puts it out now and again. Then you might think twice to watch it, not understanding the amount of video, the hours of work that they've put in just for that little that that 20 minute production is, mm. is not, it might not be valued, not even considered. Do you what what's your thoughts on that? My thoughts are that unfortunately the way it works in social media world is you have to be consistent. That's the thing. If you're not consistent, you won't be in the public eye as regular. It's like a TV channel. If that program misses a week, misses the next week after, then how is that viewers just gonna switch off? Like we're in a world where you're in competition now, people have gone off from mainstream watching TV channels to streaming, right? Netflix and Amazon. So we have gone off from there. If you go into social media world, well, there's content creators that are pumping two episodes a week, two videos a week, three a week, a w- seven all every day. Yeah. So you have to compete with that. You have to almost match that, if not, or if not, get to that level. Because unfortunately, if you're only dropping a video a month, then it's it depends what you're dropping. But also, um, the fans might you might you not know, have that you might not be able to build a what's it called a group of community around that, but. Like you touched upon Kadapa, I'd say Kadapa, you know, he's evolved himself, I think, as well. And um, I loved his recent episode, recent video I watched on mm. YouTube. It was really good. I think that was such a different side to him that I've never seen. And um, it's also when you're, I think, content creators are going into different areas now besides from just video. Do you know what I mean? They go merchandise, they're doing all sorts. I think that takes away their attention as well. So. And and do you, you know, the the pressure of for for yourself when you're creating mm. like. Talk me through when you're when you're coming together and you're putting a show together. What does that look like for you from a creativity point? Mm, creativity point is so we have to go back to the roots. Yeah, of what is a podcast? A podcast is a conversation. It's an art of convo. So me and Amra, we literally do the most minimal planning ever possible. Right? We get the studio, we go in, and we just know. Right? Uh, we go. We we just like these episodes that we're gonna do. Bang! 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 And we're just in that podcast. It's just in a conversational mindset. Like the way I'm right now, I'm pretty chilled. So I'm not like podcasting Carmen. You meet me outside, I'll be a bit more, slightly different, only 5% difference. Because I don't, we're not fake. We want to be the way we are. In skits, we put it on. And it's just doing that. And that, we've, people don't know. We started in 2020. You know, 2020, since then, consistently been podcasting. We've taken only one big break right which was not a big not even a year i think it was like two three months right and then started being seen your show it's never been a stop we've always learned the craft people now now the thing is they say yeah you get two mics and all that and go for it go for it but it's it's you don't realize there's a lot of intricacies in it and you've got to be engaging you've got to do things that are interesting so that's it minimal planning and just execute there and then it's it's a convo if you don't, I've seen people with scripts. People talk about script rakla, cut this, chop it there. I'm like, we're wasting your time. Just go for it. Kill the mic, do a madness, and then leave. That's it. That's literally the what Bainzani we do, and we've learned that over the years, just to be do that. Because if you're gonna start changing things and making it too intricate, then you're just gonna get stressed out, and you gotta learn to crawl before you walk. You know, walk before you you know the jog all that stuff so yeah pretty much that yeah i used to hear it quite a lot of people coming up oh if uh, my whatsapp group if we did a podcast it'd be sick it'd be all and when people have actually tried it and they've got through it they've lasted three four episodes and it's mm-hmm. it's gone i think the Most average part, yeah, yeah. i think the average and it was interesting you said the number the average before you change from being a podcast to a show which was i think the average episode of where people give up is actually episode 70. Really? So, yeah, at, at episode 70, people drop off. 
So it's wow. all, all people, um, and then at early points, it's like up to five episodes max. Yeah, you'll see, yeah. the, you'll see the biggest drop off, and then those mm-hmm. consistent ones is episode 70 where they kind of they go, yeah, yeah, it's and, a and that's a problem. Psychological thing, it's psychological. Look, you look, I looked at them in the first time we released our put into the podcast, you know. It, you got to look at it. Yeah, we had we didn't barely have stats. No one even looked at us. People used to overlook us. There's content creators out there that you know we wanted as guests when we were in, during COVID. They were like, no, we don't look at you. You only got 400 followers. But they, you know, what go on now? That's what I'm saying to them. But that's the thing. It's true though, isn't it? But that's what I'm saying. And now they're pulling up on us and want to message us. We were like, no, because you got to look at it. People don't know how much you know. You got to realize you need patience. You got to enjoy what you do. And if you, the moment you stop enjoying it, you can't go for clout chasing, then you might as well just pack your bags and just go and chill. Like, to, that's the best thing to do. And I remember when we started, when I started podcasting, I don't know, I can't remember which year you started. Um, uh, 2021, I think it was. There you go. That's, that's Mar- the length of time. Mar- March 21. Yeah, there you go. So you think about your journey, reflect back on the way you were in the beginning to now. When we started, we had four, five, six, maybe South Asian pods that were with us. Yeah, I was going to, I just wanted to touch back on that, was like, yeah. h- how did you, how did you um, determine the format that you wanted to do? Because like, y- you do have a massive benefit of having another person, a co-host is really important in terms of where you can bounce ideas and motivation for each other to, to get this mm-hmm. done or um, mm-hmm. just access to people, for example. Like, yeah. when you when you put that together, what was the scene like for you? Who was there? When we were putting the pod together, I just had one of my uni mates that I uh, connected with who also had his own podcast, um, different scene, and they just gave me the initial groundwork, just like kind of what it is. But they were doing video already, and we were just audio. Everything else we fend for ourselves. No one's given advice. I have no, we don't, we had no one. We had to find our own uh we have to build our own knowledge by researching simple as that right and that's how we managed to create what we created and that's it literally we went on like you know youtube and rinsed it so when we um sort of started out then doing it over the, i think within about five six months later then we started connecting with other fellow like especially dissy pods and uh there were four or five of them and I can remember, you know, some of them were doing really well, but they're not around now. And others weren't, and they're not around now. I think out of all of them, we're probably only another one is still around. That's it. So everyone else has dropped off because it's just that thing, isn't it? COVID, after COVID, you know, do you really want to do it or not? Because you're just at home all day. So, and, yeah. and and money as well, isn't it? it like, mm-hmm. as we were talking just then before about frequency, the more you do, it's going to cost you more. Uh, mm-hmm. at the same time what how have you kind of got around like you you've had a studio kind of uh, mm-hmm. built or you go to one to record we go to one we go to a studio and that's, um, I think you, it's, you obviously have to pay for that as well yeah yeah there's cut job for that but the thing is we we do it because we love it simple as that and if you don't love it then you don't even do it but I never want to come across in that way saying oh we do this we do that for you like our duty is we want to just put content out there see if it works and if it works then it's good and and just grow but the core of our what we do is we make sure we're always having fun while we're doing it the moment the fun is gone then you just it's quits that's it and making it manageable is the key thing and that's what we look at um so there is always a cost element yes um and it depends you see it as a cost or you see it as an investment so yeah and it's that's... like for, for me um you know, around sponsorship is going to be like the next thing for for, for me because I'm trying to um, mm-hmm. sort out like spaces in order to um, do uh, in person as well. Um, mm-hmm. How do you? I've always found it kind of difficult where you're trying to um, explain to somebody about your product or what you're doing, um, and 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 for it to get that kind of return investment. Do you mm-hmm. think that when people sponsor or when people are thinking thinking about it? The metrics are different when it comes to a show or a podcast. Yeah, this is, it, it, it varies. I think, you know, you say with sponsorships, you know, it's meaningful business relationships. That's what you need, right? And I think the most important thing is, is that, you know, getting along person to person, you know, and it's also how they perceive you. You've got to realise you have your own reputation. You've got your own growth and you can't let just, you know, anything get in the way of that. But it's just about 
it depends how you want it. If you, whether it's in the form of merch, whether it's in the form of shout out, whether it's in the form of this, that's up to you, really. It's simply that. And um, there is a new wave now coming in where people, where affiliate marketing is a thing, and people, businesses want to pay, you know, whoever's on a public platform, money or you know, provide products so they can put it out there. And I think that's really good. And I think it's really good having this uh, Punjabi or even South Asian businesses you know, growing via social media, which is such a great thing. And I think that's important. You know, I think I, like one of the one of the things that annoys me, um it just annoys a bit of a strong word, but mm. irritate, irritate it, I would say, is um that you see some of the South Asian successful podcasters, they've they've kind of broken away. It, it, it it's always mm. like kind of like mainstream presenters that they come from the the opera scene, the DCC, they're going to mainstream TV and they don't look back to help anyone or mm. or to do that. And you see some of those podcasters go and then you see them they're buying their own views now on on the on the podcasts mm. or streams on Spotify. And then they're buying the followers just to get to that to get that bit. Are we in danger of mimicking the in the like the music scene, the entertainment scene? Uh, uh um yeah. Interesting question. There's a lot of facets to it. I would say, from my opinion, there's no point creating content if you're buying views. You're fake. Simple as that. That means you literally your your content is not got there to that level where people are even drawing attention or even getting anyone. And it's not about numbers and metrics, how many followers you got or how many views you're getting. It's not about that. It's about honesty. That's the thing. With Bain Senior, I can send a screenshot now to anyone and even with sponsors or peer person to show that whatever we created is on off our own back never bought a single follower never bought a single thing and that takes is nothing but hard work dedication and just enjoying it simple as that and it's luck as well you always got to give you know grace it's, 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 it's to god right that that we've whatever we got we got but i don't see myself as a content creator or a big person i just see myself as just everyone else so there is that world we're in danger of it but i don't think we are yet because it's up to us what we do. If yeah, we yeah, start yeah. buying followers, then next minute, you know, everyone will, you know, as a blueprint. And yeah, you're right. Some of the, you know, we, the best thing about having your own product, like this is the most amazing thing. You have your own product. You're independent. You're not, you're not controlled by mainstream media. You're not controlled by big interests. You can do whatever you want. You can go on the mic and just talk about conspiracy theories. You can go on the mic and do whatever you want. And that's the best feeling. I would never want to be bought by an interest uh big interest unless spotify come in a deal then that's different right uh you know but even then it's got to be done in a proper way so ownership is important you've got to look at the big big examples like kanye the way they moves you know about you know jordan you know how they do their things you know it's about ownership of your own thing and um a lot of these people yeah they come from but the thing is that you touched upon now help right this is the thing i look at you got to be careful sometimes when I, there's people that, you know, the thing is people ask us so many intricate questions about podcasting or content yeah. creating. And I'm just like, I don't know because the bottom line is you can put as many meme pics, captions, little zoom, zoom, this, this, but if you're, what you're talking about, what you're doing is not anything of a material or nothing that sticks. Yeah. Then you're just, you're just covering, you're covering it up. Basically. But I think, I think even if you've tried it for, um, for a while and you mm-hmm. and you have been fake i don't think he lasts in that way i think no. the, the real thing how like rogan for example is probably the best metric meter that we've got isn't it in terms of uh, uh podcast mm-hmm. or shows or whatever however you want to define it is that he's very con- he, he, you can't lie for two thousand episodes <laughs> you've got to be yeah. he's very consistent in terms of obviously there's you know I'll be honest as well. Some of my best content has been not recorded, where they've said it's been after it, after it's been um, after the, the it's t- turned off because yeah. I know the truth. And on some stuff, I've interviewed people where I actually know the truth, but I don't want to show them that disrespect from it. And if you're fake yeah. and you're coming through, you it comes out too easily, and your audience or your supporters, your fans, whatever, they, they'll call you out as well. Yeah. So, like I said, when we had, I don't like talking about numbers, but if example give, when you were like, let's say, four hundred followers when we're doing our podcast stuff, right? People changed. People were different then. But when we went to ten thousand, then it's different then. Then it, you know, people changed suddenly because they see numbers. I'm still the same person though. I still do the same stuff. No, nothing's changed. 
So why do people change? Why are they coming around me? They're asking, they want things. And the problem with some of the upper end people is some of them have become leeches as well. They just want to leech off it for the, sh the shortcut. No, you got to work for it as well. You can't just like, I didn't get the, the access or the knowledge of whatever I want to do. And, isn't, and, you know, from when I began, you have to learn and you have to do it. Simple as that. And um, that's the problem I've got. And this is not just up and people. This is generally content creating scene. There's a very few people that really will work hard themselves and work with you as a friend, a partnership. But they always want to just take, take, take. And you can't have that. And and people copy as well, which you've got to be very mindful of. Have you um, already seen Have you already uh, seen that, where people copying? Yeah, yeah, people do copy. I've seen people adapt uh, techniques that we maybe do or just stuff that we, the way we speak or conversations we have into their own podcast which is fine because we're all in the same space. We're all going to take up or talk almost about the same things. Exactly. But if we're all looking the same, then we're all dead. Do you know what I mean? In terms of content wise, then the audience is going to look at, all right, we see this con this type of topic. Let's example, we talk about Antiga. Antiga, this pod, next pod does Antiga, two months later. Another third pod does Antiga, five months later. It's dead. That's it. We're all we're all in the same boat. So we've got to learn to be unique. We don't, I don't look at anyone. Me and Amri, we're just, we're just focusing on ourselves. Right? We don't, I, you I take time. inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I don't take inspiration. I take inspiration from like Rogan, Flagrant 2, you know, you know, shits and gigs. You know, you listen to these pods, Jack's, Jack Mate Happy Hour. You know, these podcasts are big, but you take inspiration, but you got to realize, you know, I can't be Rogan. That's Rogan. I'm just going to be myself, but create something different. And um, that's the, that's the key thing. Um, is always being unique. And uh, I think that's some problems we do have. Yeah. Be some, some fried you know, coffee. Um... Obviously, you're 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 very edgy in some of the, the the stuff that you put out there. Yeah. Um. What have you ever had any serious blowback where you thought, oh, oh, this might be we might be in a bit of trouble? Yeah, all the time. That's that that that's the way we have been. We're gonna have we're gonna have, you know, if you post something on TikTok or Insta, there's gonna be comments flying in. You know, especially religious. You know, if it's sicky related. You know, obviously I wear a bug, but my Amrit doesn't wear a bug. He's cut hair people are going to judge him because he's got cut hair like you know we you know the thing is god has created humans now whether or whether if whether someone wearing a bana or whether someone where you know being a god sick or whether someone said body whatever you got to look at it in a different way you're in your own journey you got to focus on yourself but people don't we know that so we know as soon as those reels are there about to be posted we know we're going to get the hate there but the, the point has to be made right and that's the key thing it's not for the clout chase thing you see I can we can make plenty of podcast episodes about hate from the Sikhi community and just reel it that way. But it's not about negativity, it's about giving a solution. So certain things that did go did get a lot of traction were about me talking about why um, you know, Sikhs hate Sikhs or Punjabis hate Punjabis, in that sense. You know, we've got to learn to get past the physical features of things and look inside that person as well. And um, there's a lot of that. So Amrit did face a lot of criticism because we had an episode about Sikhi architecture, about Gurdwaras, you know, why that Gurdwaras in India are very different and architectural structured in such a way. But in England, we just, it's, 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 it's a bit too simplistic. It's or it's, uh, it's the same or it's copied. And he's, he would, we were delving into the travel of light within Gurdwaras. You don't need artificial light, light bulbs. You can find, create glass panes or do things that yeah. help travel and noise as well, how shaping and all of that. But when it went on TikTok, people were like, you're Mona, you, you know, do go on there, you look like a Sharabi, you might be smoking. You don't know that person's journey. So mm. that's some of the stuff where we thought, I said to Amrit before even doing that, you've got to be ready for that. Because well, if how, I said the same you, point. Yeah, I mean, how do you kind of uh, keep other in check, like in terms of, you know, I, I mentioned about those are the, the, we'll call them pioneers of con of this kind of content right um mm -hmm. would you, how do you kind of check yourself in that you don't have that burnout that you don't um you don't have those low moments yeah so how do you keep yourself going and not burn out is about realizing social media as a world it's like you know today you might get hate and tomorrow it passes over it, it's, it's it's a quick world you'll have a hate for a day or two move on do you know what i mean and it's just about realizing that you know, you've got to, yeah, you just got to, you, you just got to recognize social media is don't take it too personal. Simple as that. If someone turn around and say, oh, I don't like your episode, I don't like your content, I would say, fine, what's the reason? And they'll say these, these reasons. Fine, Tika. That's fine. That's good. You know, you should be open to positive and negative feedback. Don't always looking for for positive. That's it. What does, what does the next six to 12 months look like for you guys? What's your kind of end goals in what mm. you want to do? Like, 
do you want to take this to mainstream, sell the show? Uh, show uh, what kind of aspirations do you guys have? It's, it's it's very hard to measure the metric. Sometimes, like my good by like we, there's a there's, there's there's successes that are happening at the moment. We've seen the growth of the Zinia show, the audience growing, you know whether and and that's great. I think it's still continuing on that journey, creating more episodes, keeping that engine going, and um, we'll see Ganja okay, what happens because you don't know. We don't know yet tomorrow whether I don't know BBC or Channel Four might turn around and say something. Uh, or we get uh, you know a, a deal coming from here, or there's a a bigger bigger uh, aspect to Dwayne Dwayne Senior. But right now we're just enjoying whatever we've got and creating a structure before going thinking about anything else. I don't want to run too much straight away. You know we've got to make sure we've got things in place um, before going and growing. But you know what about yourself? What's the future of uh, bandwagon? What are you? I mean. I think uh, what <laughs> bizarrely when I when I first started out was I just wanted to get to Jazzy B, which was yeah. my, which is which is my hero. And I think what ended up happening for me was when I got there, I just lost all motivation. I was like, I've got I've achieved what my goal was. Mm. Um, he was my hero. He's my hero in you know like musically and um, for for where for where I wanted to go, and. When when I was when I was sitting down and thinking about oh what's the next steps I couldn't answer the question, um, achieved like everything I wanted to do in that bit. I think what I've done from there is I, I've never taken this as um fully serious. I've yeah. enjoyed it um like exactly the same things as what you said. I think what what has happened though now is that there's an expectation that has co- crept through, and I and and I said that um. It's kind of one a, a little bit where I need to um, professionalize it a little bit. Um, just mm. not professionalize it in that way, but have more in, in-house guests, more kind of um, um, more thought-provoking in, in some of the stuff that I, that I want to do. Like exactly yeah. the same format, but um, I I haven't got the um, the time or the uh, the resources in terms of you know how you would do constant reels and constant this because of you yeah know, I've got a job I've got a family I've got all this and you know I make that journey very clear and transparent with anybody who's listening at the same time because it's quite easy they could be lifted and put in, into this into this place so probably the next sort of six twelve months is just kind of working that bit out um, and just you know anybody's interesting that comes on my way just to interview you know I'm not I'm not um, what I don't like is where people are telling me who to interview. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, that really winds me up. Um, some people where I've got through, and um, you know, all of a sudden I've got on fine with them, then they start cold shouldering. I'm like, what's going on? And it's because they're waiting for me to ask them, and I'm like, yeah, how am I going to know that you're waiting for me to ask you? I ain't. Yeah. I can't read. Can't read your mind. So. Um, yeah, just a, just a little bit that uh, about that probably more supporting uh, other podcasters and uh, I really move it all forward because I think if, if we move it as a collective forward, I think everyone's going to win because yeah, not an audience member doesn't listen to just one thing. They never used to listen to one chat show. Not you know people might listen to Graham Norton and listen to Alan Carr and or uh, Jonathan Ross or in or different sort of yeah, places yeah, yeah. um and i think you know where people try and hoard um listeners and viewers in one way i think that's all i think that i think that's wrong i think here the way yeah. that people listen and watch stuff is, is completely different we're not competing for yeah. the same person's ear exactly exactly it's, i always say with any other podcast especially in the dc space i'm not we're not about competition with each other it's about just creating your unique product that's yours that's your baby. That's your thing. And that's the most important thing. And I think I understand where you come from. Do you know what? I listened to the Jazzy episode. I lo- I, <laughs> and, I, and I really loved it. I was mad. I was like, oh, Jazzy BR, yeah, you know, bang, straight in, downloaded, listen to. I listened to your B2, uh, a lot yeah. of his episodes, because I love him as a guest, like his music, but also as a guest, he's really good. So you have, you, out of, compared to us, you might be bigger than us up, but actually, no, you've got the bigger guests. 
Nah, it, you've it, landed the bigger ones because they are actually really good. Yeah, I, you know what it is. I think when I look back on the Jazzy wine, it was so personal to me that mm. it came across that I was such a fan. It was in a different yeah. style compared to yeah. how I did all the others. Like, I still have the board. It's the only one I've ever prepped for. I still have the board with all the <laughs> content on there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I never, I never done that, and I just didn't want to value waste his time. But at the same time, I wanted to ask him certain questions or different styles of questions that he'd never been asked before. So I put myself under so much pressure on that, but I learned a lot of lessons out of it. Um, mm-hmm. But th- at the same time, this, we're not in a bad way. There's not that many places for those artists to go and discuss their things anymore. That like, Asian network is arguably losing it to a point. Um, yeah, once you yeah. take some of those mainstream, but who else is doing their, their their work for them? Yeah, yeah, we've got I've got a take on it. Like, you know, BBC, they've uh, reached out to us a few times, and unfortunately, it's the censorship thing. Censorship, they really want it filtered out in a certain way. We can't do that. So, therefore, my opinion is I have that same opinion where you have as well that the mainstream, let's say, South Asian media is just very washed, it's becoming almost the same. In fact, some of them copy us as well. Initially in TikTok, when they all were, yeah, there's someone copied us, like they're doing their stuff and they were definitely watching us and you can keep watching us. But it's not about that. It's about like, you know, we have as a community so many conversations to talk about, so many social issues, but yet we still fail to talk about it openly. And do you know what's the maddest thing is that the best thing I've seen is a lot of podcasts coming out of Punjab you know, Punjabi podcast and Canada as well and the, and the North America scene and they, they're creating really, really good, meaningful conversations. Yeah. So hence why no one needs to go and listen to a radio now. Yeah. I don't need to go on the channels because these podcasts are what we're creating has now become a source of entertainment, a source of thought-provoking conversations. I can name the big ones, you know, like Basics of Sikhi of such a great podcast, mm-hmm. right? Uh, there's one in America, uh, North America, Kulle Vijar, which is another Sikhi podcast. You can go on those two. You can go on all of these podcasts and listen listen to different things and different takes why not go on bandwagon listen to you know us having a little chat so that's fine but i think you know that's what i'm saying imagine if like if we keep this way of working and helping each other that it's it will just show what the next generation what you what you can do and i think importantly where there wasn't references to have those like basics for example i just use an example look at some of the the topics that they go through some of the questions that even your parents might not know, which is going to become even more important now as we have kids. Yeah. Yeah. And they are ask you a question they don't know. At least you've got a reference of a point where you can say, well, li- you can listen to this podcast, you can listen to this cu- this person, yeah. and you yeah. can actually learn it for yourself because that's the only way that that philosophy and that culture is going to move on. So like, even though like we uh, there's... Loads of shows got different styles. They all go to the same point of pushing and pushing exactly. those values. Exactly, it's about values. It's about thoughtful, provoke, thought provoking conversations. And some, for example, like university students, you know, in their first year, that anxiety. How do they manage things? You know, that the you know certain things that parents can't talk about. Sometimes they want to reach out to us. They message us. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I've had some funny ones. Those are breakup stories. You know, looking for advice, and I'm like, bruh, I'm not. A yeah, those ones. They their ones kill me. There's too funny there. They're like, buddy, kuri mere chat gaye. You know, we were like, hum ki kariya pahon, right? Do you want a matrimonial or do you want to ask to link you this uh, password with this person? We, we can't do all that sometimes. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. But we've had some serious ones, serious conversations with uh, some people in difficult situations. We just got to point them in the right direction. So, yeah, I think we're all in the same space. We all need to, you know, work together in a, in a, in a way where as long as everyone is doing their own different thing, we, we, we have those conversations. And everyone is just, you know, pushing and being creative. And we can do so many things. And as a community, we're not just, you know, pigeonholed in talking about the same things, like talking about the same old dating and same old things that have already been done. But loads and loads of times, we're just about we need to go different areas now. It's time to talk about LGBTQ. It's talking about, you know, we talk about alcoholism or something that we started up talking about and that caused a lot of traction because no one talks about it. You know, obviously my previous fields have worked in like right in law so domestic violence is something that never popped like we put a reel there it never goes but i don't care it's about putting yeah, those yeah, yeah, conversations yeah. it's not just about the views if you chase the views 
you're going to create literally irrelevant rubbish content and what are you going to put out there what who are you educating because those people are going to see you in the gurdwara see you out in public and if they come to you and they say or, you know when you have this conversation with them you've got to be that Where's genuine the energy? person you, yeah. yeah where you're genuine you can't just fake it so when I guess when anyone see recognizes me and it's it's like a it's like a always a blessing. But I always say to them, man, I'm always with the people. I'm always we're always. There. And then when I was one time, I was standing in the queue for Bob to meet meet and greet Babu. It was a Mr. Sings in Handsworth. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's this guy, a guy there with his family. He's like, I love your show, I love everything. And I was like, it's amazing. He said, there's two celebrities here. It's me. And I was like, I'm not a celebrity, literally. Mark A and i <laughs> like chill. And it's it's about uh you know speaking with them they, then they, they're not your fans they're fellow being i call a fellow community you know speak to them what is the things that you want email us dm us message us things that you want us to talk about um and that's something that's been fantastic so everything is a blessing and you should be privileged that we could get on the mic and do whatever we want when the previous generations they were in the factories grinding just to build a house for their family so we are the luckiest people on the planet so I always say like that, it doesn't matter if your video didn't get 10K or this, whatever numbers. It's just about, to see if you're content, enjoy it. My, my, my mate says the best best line uh, for about, you know, you, your grandparents were one decision away from you still shitting in the field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pure fact. In fact, there could be one decision away from yeah all sorts of things but yeah, yeah, sh- yeah. shitting in a field you know i mean that could that literally what would have happened if my granddad didn't come uk do you know what i mean and that's another area we want to go into yeah yeah because yeah. it's they're ignored it's like as if we look at the old gen and we just don't bother about them anymore yeah i've got so... an upcoming i've got an upcoming project where i'm working with uh kids on uh on um on a, on a couple of bits so um uh that 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 kind of explores the, those conversations in, in a little yeah. while to do. Yeah. anyway um i'm gonna bring it to a close actually yeah so this is called obviously this is called the bandwagon and one of the things that i do is at the end of the show is to give the the, the guest an, an opportunity to jump on a bandwagon to jump off a bandwagon or just get anything off their chest this is their open space to do so oh this is an interesting one i gotta think hard about this um uh, I think the best thing is is that I just want to the for the next guest is to always ask do they ever self reflect about themselves simple as that you know do they think about themselves do they look at themselves before looking at anyone else and do you advise other people should do that simple well yeah oh to me is this question to me no nah, I'd say yes yeah, to you as well to everyone yeah i think what i think what tends to happen sometimes when it, when i've done it uh, like an in-depth one with, with, with somebody is i always just contact them the next day and say oh how was your sleep yeah Cause sometimes because they've explored themselves and they've gone really de- into deep and reflected on so it's quite emotional for some people you know as well when they've unpicked some things and um and some things sit better with them than the next day like they appreciate it because like how many times has anybody actually sat down and had a conversation for about an hour and actually listened? So mm-hmm. they're, they're talking, they can hear you, but actually listen makes a real mm-hmm. big, a real big difference. So, and I think what you guys do, especially on your, on your, on your, is when, when you're putting your content out there, is that you look at the, 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 the key points and you add that comedic humorous touch with it with, like you said before, you know, with having the, the, the morals, the ethics still behind there with, within it. Um, and for some people, they don't have that skill in order to kind of categorize and differ between both of them, you know, but they are separate. Mm-hmm. They are separate yeah. bits within it. But, mm-hmm. you know, what you just said there actually, you know, hits on massively. Yeah, like, I, I'm not going to lie. If I walked into this band right episode, I could, we can go and just do mad comedic stuff for an hour or two hours, dinner, Madji. But yeah, that's done, yeah. But when that person presses pause, they'll enjoy, they'll have a laugh. But I, my take was I wanted to so people get to know me a bit more and see a bit more of the insides and um but yeah and I do like appreciate thank you for having me as a guest mm-hmm. I do wish you the best of luck for you know your platform that you're created and it's amazing you the guest that you had the caliber I think is amazing and it's much more better than you can have in mainstream so um I think yeah just keep it going and appreciate likewise it. yeah no, no it's, it's one of the things where like you know see what you guys do and give you flowers where it's due and um just can you drop everyone your socials where to find you what to do, yeah. give you yeah. a patreon all of that stuff 
so yeah so uh, just everyone we're on instagram uh tiktok we're on insta threads twitter everywhere so it's bain senior so at bain senior and then we're also on apple pod spotify patreon youtube quite a lot to say there mouthful and yeah and then just have a look at our content honestly and if you like it you want to get the mem go for the membership go for it um but i think the best thing is is just yeah in just have fun in life life is too short and uh yeah thank you carla really appreciate it thank you very much ricky thank you